Hi, I'm Di with Sister Chicks Quilting. Does it look like I'm doing a Halloween video today? Because I am. But I just have to show you this because it's quilted. Now, my daughter Michelle quilted it for me and guess what she quilted it in? Can you see those? The bells? Yes, what color's the thread? <laughs> I went out and I said, what did you decide to do the table runner? And she said, mom, hello, silver bells. One of our favorite Christmas songs. So I thought that was a lot of fun. Now I'm just gonna bind it in this self fabric so it'll be a nice red thing and it will be ready for gift giving. But before I start with my Halloween video, I would like to um, read this note to you. I went to my P.O. box and guess what was in my P.O. box? Look at this. Oh my gosh, I have, and the little, and the eyes are so cute. I have my own little chicken timer now. Thank you so much, I love it. And I guess I said in the video, I wonder why I don't have a chicken timer. This is the note that came with it. Wonder no more. Thank you so much for every video. You inspire and encourage me every week. This week, I'm setting my timer to get her done from Tiffany. So, Thank you, Tiffany. I love it. It works. I just, I don't know which Tiffany you are. You didn't tell me your last name. So I really appreciate this. Okay. Boo. <laughs> My favorite holidays coming up. Halloween. I've got so many Halloween quilts that I wanted to share the wealth. So I, I have a friend in, in LA who is a Halloween freakazoid. I mean, everything is Halloween. And for him, it's not just in October or even September. It's like all year. Love this guy. And I approached him about making him a Halloween quilt. He said, I would love it. Now his mother was a friend of mine. She is, his parents are deceased. And David said, I would love it if you would make me a Halloween quilt, but can you make it with the quilting fabric that my mom had? She started and never finished. Ta-da! This is it. It's a jumble out there. <laughs> yes, I said jumble, not jungle. Anyway, this is what I have to work with. I just want to show you the, and I'm going to call it a jumble of fabric that I received. The one thing it has in common is there's a lot of orange and black. It's Halloween. Some of the pieces were sewn together already. These are, I think, a seven and a half inch block. It's a very lightweight gingham and a orange on orange. There is this piece that was sewn together already. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make an executive decision and... I'm not gonna unpick this. Her stitches are really, really tight. Instead, I'm going to lay my ruler right along the seam and whack those apart. I have an idea on how to use those. I'm not gonna use the pink. I don't care for the pink. Here's something else, and I'm gonna show it to you on this piece because I think it shows better. There's this really cool stripe, great Halloween colors. These two pieces with stars on it, then there is this piece, the little kitties. It's uh, very juvenile. Speaking of juvenile prints, look at these two pieces. They're old Moda prints. And look at those witches. Can you see that nose? It, it reminds me of like the era around Snow White or early cartoons. See that witch brewing away? It's just, uh, anyway, it's cool. There, it's on, it's on purple. I'm losing my words. I'm just so stunned over this fabric. Then there is this, a border print that's very Halloweeny. And this one is a lot of fun. I don't know. I don't think it goes with everything else. This is an Alexander Henry, and you know, I would say it's very Martha Stewart-ish. I think it's my second favorite piece. However, this is my favorite piece. 
I'll lay it out here so you can see it. Do you see the cool monsters, the skeleton, the witch, guy without the head, a werewolf? Here's Frankenstein, Dracula, Igor, the ghosts. There's a lot of fun stuff and a lot of fun options for this piece. But how am I going to put them all together? They're all about half to three quarters of a yard. So that's what this video is about. Now you see what I'm working with. I would like to take you through my thought process. And this is it. The very first thing I thought of was a haunted house. There's not enough of this fabric. There's like only maybe three quarters of a yard. And I thought how cute these monsters are. I can't get them straight, can I? There we go. And I thought, wouldn't they be cute in a haunted house if they were in the windows and the doors? And I could make, you know, the little, just the little house quilt lined up. And I saw one that was Halloween. It was very cute, but I wasn't feeling the love. That was one of my thoughts. A second thought was, I could do a row by row. I could do a row of houses with monsters. Um, you know, this patchwork, I could do a double row of patchwork on the top, a double row on the bottom, and I could do a row of pumpkins. I could do some kind of bats or something out of this. I, I just had, I was, you know, like, <laughs> that didn't go over well. Then I thought, I'm just gonna do a scrappy. I'm gonna throw it all together and do a scrappy quilt. Well, I found a couple online. You know what? They looked like little kids had eaten all their Halloween candy and puked it up. It just was a massive jumble of even more jumbly jumbles. So I wasn't feeling in love. So Scrappy got checked off the list. Then I called a friend. I quilt for Beverly. She has great ideas. I showed her all the fabric. I said, what are your thoughts? And because I said one of my thoughts was to use this and these and make a table runner. So I have this cute pattern book, which is Night Out. It's Darling. It is by So Emma. So Emma's stuff is really cute. This is where I got some inspiration. I borrowed this from Blue Block. It's So Emma. And she's got the, and So Emma's so cute. And in it was this really cute table runner. See that? With the different pumpkins. And I thought, oh, how cute is that? I could probably get by with making some cute pumpkins, adding a little bit of fabric to it. And this would be a border. And I thought, yeah, I love this border. This is great. That's what I want to do. Well, Beverly said, I really like that idea. It's a good idea. But I would take this piece and make it your backing. Bingo. So first thing David's getting is a table runner. A pumpkin table runner. Second thing he's getting is a quilt. So I have everything else. I'm going to set that aside and then I have all of this. This is going to get cut apart. I am going to ditch the pink. It was five inch squares so they're like four and a half but I'm just going to take my straight edge and go right along the seam. I'm not unpicking this. And this is what I came up with. See that block? Isn't that a cute block? So there's a nine patch in the center and I could do some fussy cutting and put the monsters and these guys and these little witches. Wouldn't they be cute peeking out of these nine patches? Even some of this larger print, I could do the pumpkins and maybe the heads of the char characters and a whole quilt of this would be really cool. Like. I could make a square quilt. I, I could make three across and four down or three and three and make it square. But this pattern, it will be easy to make and I can get the size I want with the fussy cut if these are three inches finished. So I'm gonna cut these out at three and a half inch. So this is nine inches in here. And all I have to do is get some black for this and a cream or a white for this. Guess what? I'm so excited. Tomorrow is Maggie's on Main anniversary sale and everything in the shop is 20% off. 
and I went in today and I scoped it out. So I'm gonna go pick up a cream background for this and I'm going to throw in a few more Halloween prints, mostly use all of David's and make him an incredible Halloween quilt. Now, I got this idea from Blue Block when I called her on the phone today. She said, do you remember how we put the sawtooth border? And there it is. You can do it, it's whatever. Do you remember how we did the sawtooth border on our swap quilt? And I said, I do. She said, do you think you might have enough of David's fabric after you've cut the nine patch centers out to make a sawtooth border all the way around it and then border it with black? And I'm like, oh my gosh, the quilt is born. So that is my thought process. And I'm gonna go ahead and start on it today. I'm going to plan out how, how big these guys are so I know how much fabric to buy tomorrow. And I'm going to cut this apart so I can really see what I have for fabric and get going on this Halloween quilt. I'm, I'm not really flying from the seat of my pants, but maybe just a little bit because this is my pattern. And I'm just gonna make a bunch of these and border it. I think it's gonna be a fantastic quilt. And I'm really hoping I have enough to do the sawtooth edge border. I think that would be phenomenal. I love a star. So let's get going. I'm going to sit down and sew some samples up and figure out how big to make my flying geese units for this star. Look at this pile of squares that I got out of that one quilt. And I need to cut these into three and a half inch squares. So and then I have my garbage over here, which includes the pink squares, because we're not gonna use those. This is my plan. When you don't, first off, it's gonna be to use a rotating mat. If you don't have one, they are the best. I love mine. This is my second one. And I've got a two and a half inch, four and a half inch, two five and a half inch, six and a half inch, eight and a half inch, <laughs> 12. 10 and a half, 12 and a half, nine and a half, but I don't have a three and a half inch square up tool. So this is when washi tape comes in handy. And I put a little tail on it so I can easily pull it off. And again, washi tape is the best because it does not leave any sticky residue. I am just going to cut these and I'll be able to see what I have. And I really like this purple and this witch's leg. So I'm gonna do my best to get that in. Here, I'm going to do it this way so I don't cut my tape. I'm going to cut my tape if I'm not careful. All right. And then just flip it around and line up those cut edges next to the tape. And we have a three and a half inch square. One down, a punch to go. Hi, everyone. So I've spent the last two days sick and haven't done hardly any, well, I have done sewing, but I've just been really taking it easy. I'm making flying geese for the star quilt that I showed you, and I want to give you a tip on the flying geese when you sew them. I don't know, I don't, I don't see the lines showing up on my camera, but I've got my line drawn from point to point. I can see it just fine, and that's what's important. I never sew right on top of the line because it makes it always just a scant short. So I sew to the side of the quarter inch line. And that's just a little tip about making a flying geese um, unit, to sew to the side of the line. And I'll tell you why I do that when I finish it right here. Because 
when this folds over, there is plenty of fabric. It's nice and square. Now I'm putting a sawtooth border on this quilt. I'm gonna sew all of the pieces together and then put it together for you. But I just want you to know that I'm sewing a sawtooth border. And when you saw a sawtooth border, now I'm going to make it so it's the same all the way around. And I'm always going to put my pieces like this. So when I sew my border, I'm always going to sew the line on the top like that. And I'm just going to sew a bunch of these three inch pieces together. What I want to do is make it longer on two sides. So I'm going to put another five inch square on each side of this, of two of the units that goes around the star, and you'll see why in a minute. Another tip, when you're working with white on white or cream on cream, I always check to make sure I have the right side up, and I use the same light all the time. I use the light on my sewing machine, and guess what that tells me? That it's correct. So there's the upside. You can see more of the houndstooth print, and I'm going to sew it on right sides together and that my friends is a really nice flying geese unit with two sides so i'm going to press this and put it on the final block and i'll show you that in just a second remember that pattern that i showed you at the front of the video well this is it all made up and this is that flying geese unit that i just made and i'm going to sew it on right here and then my last and final block will be finished. I think first I wanna tell you what I've done before I sew that on. This material, this fabric was what he sent me that his mother had bought. So were the all of the monsters and the witches. I purchased this and this to bring them all together. But I just wanted to show you a few of the monsters. What I did was fussy cut them like I told you Look at this guy dreaming of his bones. Isn't that just hilarious? And then up here, I think these are just so cute. Anyway, there wasn't enough of this fabric. So I bought this fabric. I felt like it blended well. And I set it back. Let me stand back so you can see. And there it is. You can see, I think it looks pretty well. I'm pleased with it. That is going to be the center of the quilt. Then right on the outside of the star borders, I'm going to have another border of white. And then out of all the leftover fabrics that I made from his mother, and I threw a few in that I bought, I've made these half square triangles and I think it's going to be just a darling border. And I've slowed them together in strips, and then I'm gonna have, see this black? A border of the black going around it. So, let me go ahead, I'll get this block sewn together, and I'll get this block sewn together, sew these two together, attach them to this, then it will be time to add the cream on cream borders, or should I say the COC borders, for those of you who saw last week's video. I have it all sewn together. Didn't it turn out cute? I am loving this. When you're sewing, here's a takeaway from making up your own pattern as you go. Just plan on having mistakes and having to pick them out and start over. I've done a lot of picking on this quilt or monkey sewing. Oh, no, what was it? Oh, frog sewing, ribbit, ribbit on this quilt and uh, because of that it's taken me a little longer. I need to cut the border and this is how you figure your border. This is the formula. My borders are 54 and a half inches square. So I times that by four because there's four of them. That's 218 inches. And then I add an additional eight inches. That is because on two, four sides of each border, on the outside one, there'll be an additional two inches, and two times four is eight. So that gives me 226 inches. 
divided by the width of my fabric, 42, which is 5.38. I round up to six, and so I'm going to cut six two and a half inch strips. Sew them together on the angle like you do for binding, and then I will cut each one to fit the quilt. I'll cut two at 54 and a half inches and two at 58 and a half inches and get this border going. I am ready to attach the sawtooth borders, but this is my situation. It looks like it's a little over a half inch too big and you don't want it too short. So this is my tip for attaching this. I'm going to go up about here and here. I'm just going to go in three places up my border and I'm going to take, take a deeper stitch. No one is really going to notice and my border will come out perfectly. I have the border pinned right at the, right where it starts and here it is coming down. Can you tell where my scant quarter inch seams are? Uh, I don't think the naked eye can tell, but I want to show you the result. I would say that's a perfect fit. And I'm going to sew one border on both of the sides. And on the bottom borders, I'm going to set little cornerstones. I fussy cut these witches, and I think they're adorable. They will look so cute on the corners. I am loving this quilt with the sawtooth border. I was able to use up a lot of his mother's fabric, which will make him happy, and it really is going to be cute. The last piece is this border that I'm going to put on. It's the last piece in the stars. It's really a classic quilt, you know, star centers, border, border, border. So it's very traditional, but it's sure got a twist with it with this cute Halloween fabric. Okay, it's done. What do you think? I think that black border absolutely makes this quilt. Here, you can take a look now. This was a lot of fun to make. No, I don't have a pattern for it. I'm not going to do it until next week, but I can write a pattern if you're interested. But if you're a quilter and know how to do quilters math, you can figure out the pattern yourself. It all started with these three inch blocks. I wanted to frame those monsters and the pr size they were on the fabric was three, three, three inches. So that's why I did the three and a half inch blocks, which led to a 12 inch nine patch, which led to, oh my gosh, an 18 inch star. So this is a big quilt and it's got multiple borders. It's got the white, the sawtooth and the black border. I just love this quilt. It's going to be a hard one to give it up, but he, I know he's going to love it probably more than I do because David is Mr. Halloween 365 days of the year. So I know this is going to a good home. I'm excited about next week because I'm still doing Halloween. I'm going to do an easy pumpkin table topper that you can all do probably in a day. And it won't it be fun to get something done so fast and quick. If you like my channel and like what you see, I would love it if you would subscribe, like, and then share my channel with your friends. Your comments are great. Keep your comments coming. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.